Hey everybody, Hidden Abilities here, and welcome to the first episode of How to Make a Game. Uh, in this first episode, you'll be learning about animation and movement and whatnot. So, <clears throat> but before we do all that, I'm going to explain what this is. This program is called Game Editor. Uh, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Linux users, read the description and you'll find out how to, how to actually get it for Linux. Um, the proper version, at least. The original version for Linux, uh, it wasn't, well, it, it didn't really, uh, it, it had sound problems and it would crash and stuff, but um, <clears throat> one of the programmers, AKR, he fixed it, and uh, there's a little description thing to tell you how to get the fixed version. So anyway, the programmer of Game Editor, is, uh, he goes by Max Lane on the forums, hopefully I said that right, <laughs> if not, I'm sorry. <coughs> um... Game Editor is an incredible tool, small in file size, very big in power, and it's improving every day with the open source. So, without further ado, let's actually get started. Um, <laughs> I go to Add Actor. An actor is a character. Well, an actor is like um, a graphic, pretty much, that you can program to do stuff. <laughs> That's what an actor is. Okay, um, name it Player. Now, this one won't involve collision, but for the sake of this, just um, we'll be using the, the original graphics that come with Game Editor. So go to, go to your Game Editor folder when you browse for the file, go to Tutorials, and go to Data. In Linux, it's a little bit different, but you can still kind of navigate through the little menus. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> and uh, look for Character Right. <clears throat> when you when you get to this one or car, char right, um, make if it's not already set, make it one horizontal and seven vertical. Make the frame rate twelve. Do the same thing, exact same thing for uh, char left. Make it twelve again. Then add character stop or character stop left and character stop right. Now you got all of these. So um, now what will we, I'll, I'll be kind of explaining. <clears throat> on how to do this two ways there are two ways to make the movement one is with you know a buggy kind of thing and the other one's a little slightly it's a little bit more advanced to say the least um, just a little though but it's it's nothing that you know you can't really understand it's easy stuff but it's a little more well it involves programming <laughs> so anyway first off the first method would be go to click the actor <coughs> name player <coughs> excuse me and go to add or down here by events there it is and then go to key down and then press D make sure enable is repeated okay um, and then go up here to change animation make sure this says no change or direction uh, make it character right and uh, now go to add action again and then go to X or, and then go to script editor and then type in X plus equals five and then a semicolon the semicolon ends a line of code thing well it ends a little <laughs> okay and then click clear and then click or, and then press A and then do the same thing except this time we're gonna do character left no change this will repeat the animation changing, so therefore he won't start spazzing and stuff. Then do the same thing, but this time do x minus equals 5. And, <clears throat> as you can see, he walks. He lives. But, <clears throat> but now, you know, you got, you know, if you hold both keys, he'll just be facing right and walk in place. You know, regardless if you have this or not. So, I'm still going to complete this method first if you don't like programming. Now go to key up and then press D. Then go here, change animation, uh, character stop right, forward. And then press A. And then do the same thing, but this time character stop left forward. Now, as you can see, he'll actually stop. But like I said, if you hold both keys, he walks in place. Now you're going to have this bug if you use this method. But, if you use the other one, <clears throat> uh, 
It consists of only one thing, draw actor, um, and it uses it uses coding, which is perfectly easy, really. I'll explain everything as I code, and then try to help you guys get a grasp of what's going on. Well, that's the point of this tutorial, I guess. So go to add, go to draw actor, and go to script editor. Now, let me explain the variables. Um, there are wiki links in the very. Uh, <laughs> There are wiki links in the description to find out what types of C variables there are. So go ahead and check that out. And, uh, yeah, when you're done learning about them, well, well, if you don't feel like watching this part, you can skip ahead. But I'm going to be going over it. But you get, ah, geez, what I'm trying to say is you'll learn a lot more if you actually read the wiki than you would listening to me as far as variables go. But, uh, int is an integer variable. Uh, char or character or whatever is <clears throat> a text variable. It's a character variable. It it can store my text equals blah blah blah. blah. It can store text. Um, star symbol means unlimited. Uh, I think it can store unlimited text. I can't remember. And you can also do my text two fifty six to limit to two hundred fifty six characters. I believe. That's the, I think that's how it goes. Okay. Uh, a double can hold decimals so a double can have like like that kind of number same thing with float I mean there's really no not that great of a difference for game design at least if you're gonna use float or double as far as I'm concerned uh, a void isn't a type of variable I'll, I'll explain what those are in the future they're used to make your own functions <laughs> for me at least that's what I use them for so uh, let's get started without further ado Oh, let me explain these. There's long int, which can hold an enormous amount of numbers. <laughs> and there's short int, which can hold uh, shorter numbers. I think that's a, I want to say a two-byte variable, which is 65565, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. No. I don't know. I think I am wrong. And then there's short short int, which I don't think this will work with Game Editor, but that would limit your characters to uh, 255, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I may very well be wrong about that. Well, anyway, let's get started on uh, what we came here to do. <laughs> the animation and the walking. Make a character variable. Char star, you know, an asterisk, key equals get key state. And then in between parentheses, you have nothing, just parentheses and a semicolon at the end of that to end that off. Go about two lines down. Now, <clears throat> we're going to do... We're going to use if statements. If key, key D, which means if, okay, this part right here, key, key D, this right, this part right here, key, is actually calling the character variable, you know, and it inputs some stuff when you press, and this right here, key D. Um, just go to the game editor reference sheet, and then you can kind of look up all the key symbols you can put. There's a bunch of them. Uh, if you're going to put A through Z, you make sure key, under dash, and then the lowercase. The number is just 1 through two, uh, one through uh, 0, or 0 through 1, whatever, on the keyboard. Um, for shift and control, you would either do L shift, like key, L shift for left shift, or R shift for right shift. Same with control and alt and stuff like that. But anyway, let's just do key D, two equal signs and a 1. Uh and two and symbols this will mean if that is called and this other event is called then it executes the code so <clears throat> and key key a is zero this means it'll only work if you're not pressing the a key it won't like yeah it, it just yeah x plus equals five now we're gonna create a variable go down here to variables this time we're actually gonna create it through game editor and see the integer variable, make sure it's all default. Name it D-I-R for direction, dir. So, <laughs> dir, <laughs> hello Mr. Dir, no. Dir equals uh, zero. <coughs> Excuse me. You know what, I will be right back. All right guys, I am back. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so underneath this part, you would do change animation. Remember the no change thing again. Character right, uh, and then end that off. Let me explain what these little things right here are. A 
Okay, these are, I believe they call them brackets. I think that's what they're called, brackets. And um, you put the left bracket to begin an if statement or other statements. Uh, any kind of thing, like a void or an if. Or heck, even an INT you can kind of make stuff with. But anyway, you put the ending bracket to end it off. Otherwise, you'll, end up, you'll just end up getting an error. Uh, okay, so now if key key A equals 1 and key key D equals 0, this time it's the same thing but vice versa. X minus equals 5, I just kind of pasted that down there. Uh, DIR equals 1. And this time change, whoa, hang on, character right. I can't believe I did that. Wow, character left. By the way, expect yourself to make tons of errors. Errors will definitely happen in the programming world. Um, you know, even in this tutorial, I I definitely know I'm gonna make some kind of an error eventually. So just bear with me. Like that, like that error, for example, I got the names wrong. So just bear with me if uh, I do anything wrong. Now we're gonna make it to where when you press both keys, he just stops in that direction. First, if key key D equals zero and key key A equals zero. Same thing with a four, but if they both equal zero. Switch. Now this is almost like if statements, but uh, you know, you, you s case zero would be like saying, all right, you put, you type in switch, and then right here you type the variable that you're going to be pretty much ifing, I guess you can say. Um, case zero would be the same thing as saying if dir equals, equals zero, but it's a little bit, yeah. You get the point, I guess. Uh, how can I explain this more? Yeah, it's it's pretty much like if statements, but a lot shorter and a lot easier to manage. <clears throat> so, case zero, change animation to stop right. Break, you want to break that off. Type in a break to end the uh, if statement, pretty much, to end the case. Case, wait, case one, break, end that off. And now we end the if statement. We end the switch with the ending bracket, and we end the uh, if statement with the ending bracket. Character, and then we replace this with character stop left. Now we're going to copy this code. Press Control C after you highlighted it, and then go down here, press Control V. And it seems to give us a hard time. It does that sometimes. I don't know why it does that. Alright, hang on. Break. There we go. So now, but we're going to change these to 1 the values this time. And here we go. Now the character will actually stop when you and he he doesn't glitch. And there you go. There's the perfect movement system for your game. But if if it was too confusing, then just use the first method. It'll work just fine for your first time. So there you go. There's no more well, what used to be known as moonwalking in the game editor forms, which the character would be able to walk backwards. But not anymore. Um, next episode, I'll be going over collision and preventing the player from going outside of the view. Thank you all for watching this first episode. Um, tomorrow, we'll be getting into collision and a little bit of level design, too. And like I said earlier, a few seconds ago, preventing the player from going out of the view. All right. Once again, this software I'm using to record the screen is called Debut Professional or something. It's really great. You should go check that out. An amazing piece of software. I mean, it's incredible. Um, I'm using that as also to record my Let's Plays for the capture card and stuff. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Peace.